So how did your half day of trading go? Wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday. It is July 3rd. Now today we only had half a trading day, and tomorrow we don't get to trade at all, Tuesday being the 4th of July. Well, I didn't think anybody was going to show up today. No trading yesterday, no trading tomorrow. Well, I'm glad I got out of bed. There was a lot more activity on the penny markets than I was expecting. And that's what I shop, the penny markets, OTC and all the other markets for stocks under five bucks. I'm looking for stocks that have potential to make me some money and you some money. Now, when I go looking for hot stocks, I don't play around with the filings and the press releases until I find a chart that has heat. I'm looking for charts that are ready to break out or have a lot of volume coming in. There's some telltale sign that says I'm probably going to pop. Well, when I see that, when I hear that coming from the chart, then I go rummaging around through all of the filings and the press releases looking for the catalyst. When I find them, those are going to be the sort of stocks I play. Those are going to be the sort of stocks I share with you. And I got three of those for us right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Rimrock Gold Court, ticker RMRK. I'm loving the chart. She's already broke out. She's well over that 200. She started running on the 20th, went through the 200, and she's been climbing ever since. She's had a lot of news, change of operation, change of name, and money's going to be coming in. So it's exciting right now. RMRK, she finished today at a brilliant buy price, double zero one one. Basically, all it has to do is get to double zero two, and you've made 100% gains. That is a very small move. Get to three, you've tripled your money. Four, quadrupled your money. Why wait to buy in at double zero four and have to go all the way to 0 0.016 to quadruple your money? Isn't it better to get it at this price? If you've done your due diligence, just because it's a good price doesn't mean it's a good time to buy in. But right now, I think it is. We got a gain of over 22% today. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got that verified profile and transfer agent I'm telling you to always look for. Lots of important information in there, especially with a pink. You end up holding this because you got caught with a bag. You're going to want to be holding a stock that has at least validated information and people are going to give some respect to. So this one's looking pretty decent. Problem here is, is she is a shell risk. She's not making any money and she says she's in business. She's supposed to be making money. So things need to change. Well, they are changing. Now, they tell us down here a description of what they do. I know, at first you thought it was a mining company, right? Well, probably was at one point. But here they tell us they are into CBD and hemp products. And that is true as well. But let's get a clearer picture of what this company is about. Lots of these companies on the OTC, especially the pinks, are changing operations often, but they're not keeping up changing their description. So the best place to get the most current description is in the most recent financial. Now this is a perfect description because it's a summary of everything they've done from the beginning to the end. So this is everything we need to know right here. So pay attention. Rimrock Gold Core has recently entered the CBD hemp market. Their idea of recent is a few years ago. With a focus on developing and marketing a unique line of CBD oils and hemp extracts, as well as identifying strategic acquisitions. Now, back in 2018, September, they launched the wholly owned subsidiary Aqua Cannabis Core. Then in 2019, they launched another subsidiary, Aqua CBD Coffee. Right behind that, they partnered with Vera Roasting. Vera Roasting is selling the products on the new website, aquacbdcoffee.com. And in addition to that, they have relaunched the aquacannabis.com website. But they're not just selling CBD products now. They are also selling Delta 8 THC oils and edibles. This will get you high. Absolutely. So now they're working with CBD and THC. Then here, April 28, 2021, Rimrock Gold entered into the nicotinamide monoclonotide market with the introduction of a new brand, Astound NMN. Now, we don't need to learn too much about it because it was just about a year later. They took it and they sold it to Branded Legacy. Then they made another deal just here in December. The company signed a definitive agreement to acquire 100% interest in Blue Nutric. 
The company is currently working on completing the transaction and expects the transaction to close on or before June 30th. Well, that's come and gone. What happened? Well, they had an update news press come out on that day. They tell us here that the company announced the signing of a definitive agreement to acquire 100% interest in Blue Nutric Group. Blue Nutric is an eco-friendly and groundbreaking company servicing the algae farming and nutraceutical industry. Now, this is such a big deal to the company that they're changing their name to Blue Nutric. Blue Nutric has got a lot of different things that they're working on. They have developed some fertilizers in the form of new probiotics for the agricultural sector. These new probiotics will have the ability to increase the speed at which agricultural commodities grow. It makes your plants grow faster. We're going to get food faster. They also go on to tell us that they've developed new disease-resistant plants and algae for food, feed, and biofuel. And they're backing this up with 180 papers that have been published and seven patents. They tell us here that algae is fast emerging to be the most promising, long-term, sustainable, as well as highly eco-friendly source of biomass, oils for food, feed, fuel, and other coal byproducts. Blue Nutric aims to tap into this market. Upon production commencement, forecasted five-year revenue aim is to reach $120 million with $100 million coming from the Omega oil sales and $20 million coming from the protein biomass sales. So, they've got a new company working with algae and a lot of different products. We're going to have to do some more research there. Still working with CBD and now working with THC as well. So they've got a lot happening and the revenues are going to start coming in more and more. Speaking of coming in more and more, what was the relative volume around the company today? Boom! Look at that. Wow, she already had 53 million shares a day. And today she more than tripled that with 165 million shares. Lots of attention being paid to Rimrock. Share structure for the company... Oh, 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 well, I guess everything can't be pretty. No, I was unaware of this. Outstanding share count is at 2.8 billion shares. Looks like our float is probably 2.5 billion shares. It's ultra high. Financials for Rimrock. We got nothing annually. We got nothing quarterly, which is why this news is so important. They've made a deal with a company that is supposed to be bringing in revenues immediately for them, up to $120 million. That's a huge jump from Zip. Looking at our disclosures, we don't have anything since 2018. And all that news, well, we basically covered it all. Most of this news was about the deal that they were making with Blue Nutric, but they talked about the CBD coffee here and other things. But there's nothing else that we didn't cover just by reading the description in the financial. You see how beneficial that can be. What the financial can't do is show you the chart. That's why you need me. Come on, let's go check it out. Uh, Houston, we've got a successful launch here. This is RMRK, Rimrock Gold. We're going to be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view for the company. Back in December, she hit her high of 0013. Came under that 200 and she fell for months down to a low of 0002, which she hit at the beginning of May. And that was the end of the downtrend. Right there at the beginning of May, she started her uptrend. Took a couple months for her to get from 0002 to 0004. But that's when she broke through the 200 and put it into high gear and took off and launched. And today is one of her strongest days since. Volume has been growing all of this time. Now, what we've got to be leery of is she is floating on the 9-day SMA nicely, getting way up there too far up there. She's getting further and further away from her cousin SMAs. She can't get too far away from home. It's like a rubber band. You stretch it too far, it's got to come back. Ooh, that was loud. <laughs> it's got to come back. So we watch for that dip. Osculators are very, very strong right now. PPO is screaming up just like our MACD. Green lines are accumulating the bars underneath and our RSI is in the overbought right now at virtually 72. 
20 day one hour view what a delicious chart low bubble in this corner triple zero three and a high bubble in this corner double zero one two three hundred percent gains right there actually actually four hundred percent gains right there whoa slowly she got up on top of that 200 and once she did she got very excited she got up there she jumped onto that nine day escalator and she has been climbing oscillators are still all strong everything is pushing up right now and you can't go wrong if your oscillators are all pushing up five day five minute loving these charts low bubbles in this corner triple zero five we're still up there at double zero one two on top of the 200 she came down she tagged it she's bouncing off of it and she's pushed away from it now paying heed to the 50-day sma oscillators they are a little different right now they're still strong but they have cooled off our macd had a crossover right back here where was that right here that bounce on that 200 brought her down hard but you can see she's climbed fell again right there bouncing and she's coming back up looking like she's going to cross over our rsi is very calm right now it is flat at 54.55 still i like rmrk i think she's got a lot happening right now the change of their ticker because of the change of business going into algae which is something that doesn't sound very attractive i know but Food is food, and if you can process it properly and get it as an ingredient, nobody knows the difference, and we are getting the benefits of it. So RMRK, do you think it belongs on your watch list? I am sharing it with you for that reason. You know, it wasn't too long ago that companies dealing with the cloud were all the buzz. Everybody understood how important the cloud was. With all the information and data that we gather, it is just impossible to put it into a computer's hard drive or onto a server. It had to go to the cloud. And now, with the introduction of artificial intelligence, all that data that AI accumulates, where do you think they put it? In the cloud. The cloud is relevant. It is very important. We're not going to be able to survive without it. Everybody is connecting to the cloud for everything. And that's what DTST is all about. Data Storage is a cloud company dealing with huge companies all around the world in lots of different sectors. Now the chart's looking good. They are in a breakout right now after a very long downtrend on the one year, one day chart. They've gotten up over that 200 day SMA and are climbing. And they've got big news out about big deals they're making that are helping their revenues to grow. So. DTST, it's time to look at her. She finished the day at $2.27 with a small drop of about 2.5%. She is on the NASDAQ, so we can trade this pre-market and after market. Now, we do have a description here, but this has got way too much jargon in it. So I'm going to go to a short and sweet description over here. They tell us that Data Storage Corporation is a family of fully integrated cybersecurity cloud infrastructure and voice and data companies built around investments in proprietary IT solutions for a broad range of domestic and global customers, including Fortune 500 clients across a wide range of industries, such as government, education, and healthcare with the focus on the rapidly growing multi-billion dollar business continuity market. What this is, is during disasters, when companies are shut down, this is supposed to help them stay up and running. So what was the relative volume around the company today? <laughs> oh boy, she's kicking, going from 40,355 to 40,365. A whole 10 extra shares today. Definitely under the radar. Share structure. Well, this is unbelievable. Outstanding share count, they tell us, is 6.8 million. Well, restricted shares is 2.6 million. So there's no way that is a half a million. You subtract this number from that number, you're looking at roughly 4 million. Well, I ran over to Google. That's what everybody said. Just a little over 4 million shares. So it's not a half a million. It's not 165,000. But it is a mere 4 million shares. So it is a very small float. So when the volume comes back in, it can move this like a helium balloon. Financials for the company. 
they're growing and they're growing nicely as you can see for the last four years 8 million 9 million 14 million 23 million and they are keeping the profits looking at the quarterly same thing going on there they are growing 4.8 4.4 5.9 6.8 so they are getting more and more money disclosures for dtst We've got an S8 here. They had to file this, and this basically listed a whole bunch of other filings that they had. It makes them look good for the SEC. And that's really all we got to look at here, except the most recent financial. You want to know more about the company, that's where you want to do your due diligence, in the most recent financial. All right, taking a look at that news. Most of this news isn't about anything important, but we've got two pieces of news here. One that came out May 12th, and one that came out June 29th. This one tells us that Data Storage Corporation secures seven-figure order with a Forbes Global 2000 listed company. Now, I take you in to read it, but they don't give us any numbers. They don't tell us the name of the company. Maybe that's because they work with security. I don't know. But we know it's a multi-million dollar deal with a big company. And then the same thing with the news that came out just the other day. Data Storage Corporation secures multi-million dollar contract with a leading business process solutions provider. They don't tell us how big the deal is, no dollar amount, and they don't tell us the company's name. All we know is that they are making money hand over fist. You see their revenues are growing and they are making big deal after big deal after big deal. Now let's go take a look at that chart. We are looking at a one-year, one-day chart for DTST. Our 52-week high is $2.94 in August, and our 52-week low hit us in January at $1.39. And it was then she changed her trend. She has been on an uptrend ever since January. Now, she's been bouncing off of this 200-day haul, working away across the 200-day SMA. Now, we don't talk too much about the 200-day haul. I like this, but a lot of people don't use it. What it is, is it's 200 days of prices averaged together, just like the 200-day SMA. But the haul puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a line that's closer. And as you can see, the price does respect that SMA as well. Jumping down to our six-month, four-hour view. So there's our low bubble. She went straight to the 200 from there. She's been meandering around the 200, and now she's taken off and pushing away. She's even pushed away from her 50, and she is getting rather high. She's getting up there. So she's either going to have to go sideways for a while, waiting for that 20-day SMA to catch up, maybe even the 50-day SMA, or it's probably going to come down. So we got to keep our eye on that. Oscillators show exactly that. She is making a decision right now. Am I going to stay here and go sideways or am I going to fall? Volume is getting stronger right now. Today was less than the days before, but you can see it is building up. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. On top of the 200, hit a low bubble right there. She broke the 200 just a smidge with a green bar. Pushed herself up and she is climbing. She put herself on the 50-day SMA and then pushed away, ignoring the 20. Went straight to the 9-day SMA. But hey, look, came right back to the 20 here. How friendly is that? And we do have a green bar at the end of the day. Oscillators are not looking promising. They look like she is pushing down right now. Not with a lot of strength, but she is pushing down. 5-day, five 5-minute five view. Still on top of our 200. She was under it back here. She got up on top of it very quickly. Jumped up onto her 50. We have a foundation spike here. Goes way down deep, but it's not like an indicator she wants to fall. It's almost like a stabilizer. Put it into the ground, came back up, and started to climb. And she's paying heed to our 50-day SMA up here. She's under it right now, but it looks like she's trying to get back on top. Our oscillators finally agree with me. They are in recovery right now. They are all turning up as if they're going to get back on that 50 and continue her steady up climb. This is not a runner. She's not surging. She's just growing since January. Nothing wrong with that. DTST. She's not going to make you rich in a day, but she could put money in your pocket over the next few days. You're probably familiar with this penny stock from the NASDAQ. This is Workhorse Group. 
ticker WKHS. Now, like all the stocks we look at, I picked this one because of her chart. But I really picked this one because of her chart. She has got an excellent atypical breakout chart. What's an atypical breakout chart? Oh, that's the one where you've got the 200-day SMA coming down like a ski slope with the price way down here. Finally, leveling off into the parking lot, giving the price an opportunity to get it right up underneath it or on top, getting ready to run. Well, that's what we got here. Plus, she's got a tsunami, an actual tidal wave of volume coming in right now. What we need is a catalyst. We got all kinds of them, old and new. So right now is a perfect time to be looking at Workhorse. WKHS finished this half day at almost 99 cents with about 13.5% gains. She is on the NASDAQ, so she's free to trade. So what is Workhorse Group all about? Well, most people think of Workhorse as an electric vehicle company, which they are, but they're more than that. We are a U.S.-based developer of medium-duty battery electric delivery vehicles as well as unmanned delivery drones that are fully integrated with our workhorse electric vehicles. So say you've got a UPS truck doing a delivery and your fence is locked and they can't get in. Well, they can put your package onto this drone and fly it on over, bring that drone on back and never need to get out of the vehicle. That's a big deal. Now why did I bring up UPS? because they just made a deal with them. We have recently received an initial order from the UPS for our 125 E-Gen trucks. And as a result, we are in the process of becoming an original equipment manufacturer, also known as OEM. It is a big deal. We are also a developer of cloud-based, real-time telematics performance monitoring systems that track and display the performance analytics and the location of each workhorse vehicle. So all of their equipment is hooked together. So what's the relative volume around this company today? Nice! We've got about a 25% increase in volume going from 11.4 million, which isn't bad, up to almost 16 million. Share structure for the company. Looks like we're going to be roughly at 200 million. Everything else here looks like 200 million, so that's what I'm thinking it is. Financials for the company, they're making money. Now, I say that because a lot of your electric vehicle companies are not making any money yet. They do have money on the books. It's erratic as heck. 376,000 in 2019, jumping to 1.3 million, to losing 851,000, to now up over 5 million. It is all over the place and they're running at a loss. Look at that. Let's check out our quarterly. Well, the revenues are getting better. At least they've got some harmony to them, but they're still losing money, though that's improving. They lost a lot the last quarter. This quarter, this just passed, they've got that number down. I really do want to see what their balance sheet looks like. All right, cash. They've got $99 million in the bank, and they've got $182 million in assets. So roughly half of everything they have is in the bank. And total liabilities is only $74 million, so they're up $120 million in assets. Assets are looking good, but boy, those revenues are all over the place. Checking out the disclosures for the company. We do have two recent ones. We got an 8K on the 28th and a Form 4 on the 29th. Form 4s. This is whenever an insider acquires or disposes of shares of the company's stock. Now, we're mostly interested when they buy or sell them. They can be given shares or have them taken away for one reason or another. Up here on this corner, you'll see who the buyer or seller is. It's James Harrington. He is the general counsel officer for the company. Here in the middle, you can see if they're buying or selling. If it's red, they're selling. If it's green, they're buying. 1,770 shares were being sold at roughly 80 cents. If you see a zero here, then it means they didn't buy them or sell them. Shares are moving for another reason. And he's got almost 400,000 shares. And he's selling less than 2,000 shares. I mean, that's like $1,500. Maybe he's paying the mortgage. I'm thinking he just needs to pay the bills. Just needs a little extra cash. I wouldn't worry about it. This 8K, this is a catalyst. Now this, it's very long. They've got a lot of information here. This was about a lawsuit that was started back in 2021 
actually eight lawsuits. And they listed a whole bunch of people in it. And they were upset because they said the company declared that they were going to get a huge portion of the United States Postal Service business. And that didn't happen. Well, I don't know how it all worked out, but the final outcome, a cash payment to workhorse, defendants shall cause to be paid to the company $12.5 million from the company's relevant side ABC directors and officers liability insurance policies. So this case is done, whatever it was all about, and the company is getting $12.5 million. Now, they have to do something with that money. I'm not quite sure what corporate governance reforms. They have to use this money for the reforms, whatever they are. But the bottom line is, it's resolved and finished. And finally, the news. All right, our news goes back to May of this year. A lot of it has to do with their quarterly results and transcripts. Now, what I learned here is that the company's got a lot of vehicles. I mean, we saw the UPS, they were getting the E125 Gen. Here at the beginning of June, they tell us that the company was showcasing their W56 at the Cal Starts Electric Vehicle event. And then the news we're going to look at up here, Workhorse Group begins W750 production. So they've got a lot of vehicles. Maybe they've got a lot of drones as well. Now they tell us here halfway through June that they had announced their first commercial drone purchase. They tell us here that the company received its first commercial drone purchase order for the Horsefly. The company received purchase orders for two commercial drones, including one from Valkyrie, a Chicago-based smart mailbox company with an international exposure that works with companies, governments, and other organizations to shape the future of drone delivery. In other words, they think this company might be able to open up doors for them. The other piece of news, that one came out on the 27th. They tell us here the company announced it has started production of the W750 at its manufacturing facility in Union City, Indiana. The company also announced it has entered into a partnership with Smyrna Truck to be its first certified electric vehicle dealer in Georgia. So they've got a factory, they've got a dealership, they've got multiple vehicles, they've got drones. And they got the cloud. The company is really doing a lot and they just need to get their footing and they're going to start running hard. But besides all that, the chart is ready to run hard right now and she's got enough good news to get it going. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You darn tootin' that's a hot chart. That is WKHS, Workhorse Group. This is a six month, four hour view. We got a high bubble in November of $2.98, a very hard, long, drawn-out fall to $0.71 cents about five days ago. But there is no doubt that that volume is growing. It has become a tsunami, an actual tidal wave of volume that is pushing this price. And we are well positioned right now. She got up from underneath everything, jumped onto that 200 fell fast and hard down to this low, and now she's turning around on top of her 200. It's a perfect setup. Now, ideally, what we're looking for is for this 50-day SMA to turn around and start crossing the 200. That's a golden cross, one of the strongest technicals on the chart. So much so, people search for it with their scans because they want to play them. This is looking like a beautiful setup. Oscillators, all of them are pushing up right now. RSI is on fire. This looks outstanding right now. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, we're on top of the 200 here with a high of $1.24. She came down to that low. She's back up on top of the 200, floating on her 9-day SMA. Here comes our 50-day SMA right up underneath the 200. This is going to be a perfect setup for power. And look at our oscillators. Everything is shooting to the moon, and we are still on fire with our RSI. Five day, five minute. Oh, goodness. All right, she looked bad a few days ago, but she was really just hanging on to the 200 until she didn't want to stay there anymore, and then she launched. She is now giving all respect to the 50-day SMA. You can see she's riding that. She comes underneath that. That's when you start to get concerned. She was way up here. She went sideways waiting for the 50-day SMA to catch up. Everything is still looking like she is on track to climb. She's on the 50 right now. 
we would expect a bounce. That's what she's been doing all the way along. So that's what we're going to count on. Oscillators. They're a little weak right now, but they're not bad. Everything has been going sideways for a while. We had one red bar here at the end of the day. But I'm liking WKHS. She's looking great on the long chart. She's got lots of little catalysts, big catalysts. Everything is working out for this company. Revenues, I wouldn't worry too much about those right now. Lots of people are watching it for a reason. Grab onto their shirt tails and let's go for a ride. So we got a variety of charts with the stocks we looked at today. And without a doubt, the best one is Workhorse. That is screaming, I'm ready to run. So I'm going to be watching that one first thing Wednesday morning. DTST, she looks good as well, but I like her for a long hold. I think cloud businesses are going to be big, and this is already a big cloud business growing right now. And then you got RMRK. Just made that deal with Blue Nutric, the algae company. They're not making any money right now, so they need this business. So all of these have got catalysts and they've got warm charts. What they need is a little more due diligence. Can you give it that? Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.